Hey, it's Will. I've got a fourth video here in our series of video tutorials. This fourth video is very special and it may even be a little bit controversial depending on who you talk to. In our plugins so far we have a blue Ableton volume knob here, we have a mute switch, we've got a couple of VU meters we put in, and in the last video we put in this channel selection drop list. I've added another drop list here and I get a whole lot of requests for doing this kind of a GUI control. In this case, I, I get requests people saying, I want to put built-in presets into my plugin that aren't maintained by the DAW or part of the whole preset system, like, a, like an internal preset. Um, when people say that, the first thing I say is, why would you want to do that? Why don't you just create a factory preset and let the DAW handle all that stuff like it's supposed to do and like it wants to do? And they will usually have some sort of a, a, a reason for it. Very often it's a good reason. It might not be a preset per se, where you're going to be selecting a preset and reconfiguring the entire plugin. It could be a mode of operation of the plugin. Um, I gave a plugin project to my students last year that was an RE20 Space Echo plugin, and it has a configuration switch in it that, uh, uh, that resets the kind of the way that the, the, the plugin is set up on the inside. And this is a case where they said, you know, when I change that configuration, I need to move the controls around to reflect what's happened because of that. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. The first thing is if you want to create an intelligent connection between controls, for example, selecting a preset and then having all the knobs move because of the preset you selected, or having a control where let's say you move one knob and other knobs move along with it, there is a right way to do that. And the right way to do that is with a subcontroller in VST GUI 4. In the Aspic SDK, I have an entire tutorial on how to design a subcontroller from the ground up. You have to make a C++ object to do that. And in this particular tutorial, there's a link button. And when you push the link button and move one knob, the other knob will move with it. So this stereo links these two controls together. This is, again, the right way to do this. We, we let the VST GUI for subcontroller system handle this type of chore for us. The user will press the link button, move it, and then our plugin will receive the information from the two controls as if the user had two mice and they were moving both controls at once. That's the right way to do it, but I know that a lot of people don't want to do that because they don't want to write another C++ object. They don't want to go through the learning curve of doing a custom subcontroller. It's really easy. I'm, I'm not kidding. Or the thing that they're trying to do is very, very minor. It's a, it's a minor detail that doesn't warrant uh, adding all this extra code and then having a custom GUI thing. I'm going to show you guys how to do that today. Now, I've already put the code in place for the preset. It's a drop list. It has three um, selections here. And we use a strongly typed enum. Here's the plugin core. There's a strongly typed enum here, preset selection. It has full, which means unity gain, meaning volume equals one. Medium, which means the volume gets set to minus six dB. Or quiet, which is where the volume gets set to minus 12 dB. When the user clicks with these, this preset connection, we need to reconfigure the internal parts of the GUI, uh, sorry, of the plugin according to that. Again, controversial, don't send me hate mail, I'm just going to show you how to do it. So the way to do this is actually not to use the plugin, uh, the process audio frame, because by that point it's too late. What we need to do is to intercept the click when the user makes that preset selection. We need to intercept that in the plugin and then reconfigure the plugin and then have the GUI reflect that reconfiguration. So that's what we're going to do, and I'm going to open the compiler here. There's a special function called GUI parameter changed. It's in the plugin core. It's down a couple of functions from process audio frame. Whenever the user moves any, any controls, this function gets called. You're past the control ID of the value and the actual value of the control as a double. It doesn't matter what kind of underlying variable there is with this control, it's going to cast it as a double and you're going to get that double value. If we go back to plugin core, uh, full, medium, and quiet, those are the integer values 0, 1, and 2. So what we want to do is we, wanna, we want to intercept that click, check the actual value here, and see if it's 0, 1, or 2. And then we want to reconfigure the volume control. Now, the volume variable is right here. 
we want to issue a command back to the host to change the volume knob's location based on the selection that we made. The way that I did this in Aspic, you can make a bunch of changes all at once, meaning we can, we can decode what the user selects, and then we can change 10 different knobs all at one time, all from within the same function. That means you don't have to write 10 new sub-functions to do that, you can, you can do it all at once. Now a key to this is something called the GUI parameter structure. And if you go into the Aspic documentation and you go up to the search, you can look for the GUI parameter and here it is. The GUI parameter structure contains all the information you need to tell the host what you want a GUI control to look like. The control ID is the ID value of the control that you want to manipulate. The actual value is the, the value of the control that you want it to take on. We're not going to set any underlying variables within the plugin. If you do that, you've now broken the system of thread safety, meaning you don't want to change the underlying volume control. You want to tell the host to change the GUI to this new value, and then you wait until that value gets changed in the thread safe manner that it normally happens, and then it gets pushed into the plugin. So we're going to be using the control ID and the actual value. There is a custom data, a void pointer custom data here, and a flag for using custom data. I'm not using this in Aspic right now. This is reserved for you guys. You can send all kinds of custom information to the plugin GUI if you want to. I, again, I don't recommend it. I already made a way of doing subcontrollers and custom views for that, and I have tutorials for it. So um, enough of the warnings. Let's go ahead and, and, and see how this works. In order to send a command back to the host, we need to fill out a host message info structure. And that host message info structure has a member called the message. And send update GUI is one of the messages that you can send. You can right click on that and go look at it and see where it's defined. So we're, gonna, we're going to go into the GUI parameter change function, decode the control ID of whatever changed, and the control ID preset selection is the ID value for that drop list with the preset in it. So when we detect that that's been changed, we set up a host message structure with a send GUI update message. And now we need to send a GUI parameter structure back that has the volume information that the host needs to apply to the GUI. So we will create a GUI parameter here. I'm naming it volparam. The control ID is the control ID of the knob that we want to adjust, that's the volume knob. So its, control, its target control ID is going to be for volume here. Now what we need to do is to compare the actual value here with the typed enumeration 0, 1, or 2. So I do that right here. If actual value equals equals 0, equals equals 1, or equal equal 2. This is going to let us have those selections. For the actual value equals zero, that corresponds to the full volume. So we set the actual value to 1.0 for that control. For the minus 6 dB, which is going to be the medium right here, or, or number one, we set that to 0.5, and minus 12 dB is 0.25. With this parameter structure filled in, we then push it back into a vector called GUI parameters. So here is my pushback of that GUI structure on that vector. You can push back as many as you want. So you could, you, could, you could issue commands to 10 different controls to alter their states here. The fundamental thing to notice is we're not changing our underlying variable that's bound to that control. We're, we're putting a message into a GUI structure and we're letting the host do all that stuff for us. Once you've pushed back all of the parameters here, you then issue one final send host message command. And I use the plugin host connector. This is documented in Aspect, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time in it right now. But this is how we send that message back to the host. So let me go ahead and load the plugin, and we'll watch this in action. So I'm going to load it here. Remember that our volume knob is a anti-log taper. So it's, it's all crushed up into the top level here. You'll see what I mean in a second by that. If I change the preset from full to medium, I'm going to go to a volume value of 0 0.5, which is minus 6 dB. And you can see that it changed to 0 0.5. You can also see what I mean by its anti-log taper. That wasn't a very big move here. And when we go to quiet, it will go down to minus 12 dB, which is 0 0.25. So you can see here that this menu control 
is adjusting that volume knob. And then I'm waiting for all that parameter change information to get back into the plugin to actually apply that volume change. Now the answer is, you know, does it work? Well, the answer is yes, it works, and it works pretty seamlessly. There's full, go to quiet, minus 12 dB, and we'll go to medium, minus 6 dB, and then back to full, which is 1.0 or unity gain. So in this tutorial, I've gone over how to create a preset drop-down list here, and then how to manipulate the GUI controls from within the plugin. I've also explained to you that this is a very controversial thing, and the right way to do this is with a VST GUI for subcontroller. But if you absolutely just won't do that or don't want to do that, then here is another way to do it that is thread safe. You just need to make sure you don't manipulate your bound variables, variables from within here. So I'm going to end the video now. That's a really, really uh, important video. I, I've never shown this information before, so I'll do that. And in the next video, we're going to we're going to assemble a GUI for this thing, and we're going to create a GUI that can scale itself as well. So we'll do that in the next video.